can you smell the desperation? All right, I'm gonna film this with my phone. Wow. I'm gonna film this with my GoPro instead of my phone because <clears throat> I feel like it is a little bit better quality picture. But anyway, welcome to another episode of Midwest River Rat. I went ice fishing one day last weekend and I went chuck, it, chuck lures in the river on Monday. I'm pretty sure I had a couple bites in the river on jerkbait, but didn't hook nothing. So, still committed to putting out a video a week, so I'm gonna show y'all all of my rods and reels. And we're gonna start kinda down at the bottom and work our way up. So that's what I got for ya. So I grew up fishing from pretty much birth it was my grandpa got my mom into fishing and my mom got me into fishing so I pretty much have them to thank for this but I grew up pretty much fishing lakes pretty much just a bobber and a worm catching panfish and every once in a while you get a random bass or uh, once I did get a small musky like really small musky so I always loved fishing and I was always trying to figure out how to catch the bigger fish. I never was taught how to use lures, like artificial lures and like live baits as far as like big live baits. But then one time, one of my other grandpas took me fishing in a river and we caught some pretty good sized bass. I'm pretty sure, it was so long ago, I'm pretty sure they were bass out of a river and holy crap fighting I mean granted they were the biggest fish I'd ever caught but just the immense power of a river fish versus lake fish was incredible and then many 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 years later my best friend Ben uh, he took me river fishing down at the dam where you actually see me fish a lot on the red cedar here and that's what really got me into river fishing because the lake was nasty, is nasty, and but then I had to learn all about current. So I was tying rocks to my line. I was using chunks of metal that I'd find along the riverbank that wash up and just pretty much anything, everything. And then I found a pile of old sockets somewhere and I started using those. And that's actually when I started catching catfish for the first time. I was using old sockets for sinkers but I still didn't know anything about uh, artificial lures or anything but I got into catfishing pretty heavy for, for a couple of few years I still love catfishing but within the last couple of years I started throwing lures because I watched my buddy catch huge pike like one after another for a whole summer and then I just started throwing them around and I was like, okay, obviously these things are working. I need to figure them out. And I just started throwing what I had. And basically what I had was stuff that I had pulled out of my mom's tackle box when I was a kid and never learned how to use. Been sucking up ladybugs since we moved. So yeah, basically ever since then I've been fishing rivers. Um, every once in a while I hit a lake, but I just, I really like water that goes somewhere. I really like following rivers and just the river fishing in general I enjoy a lot more than, than standing water. So with all that being said, I guess that's my little story. Um, we'll get to the rods now. So, when I caught this muskie, I was using, pretty sure this this rod not this rod but the same exact one and i was using a very similar cheap walmart brand reel and i was chucking just a little tiny bucktail it was a number five maps with small treble and just as cheap it's i mean it's a it's a panfish setup it's basically we got a zebco hot 
cast. Four foot, six inch, medium light, moderate rod. And I like these rods for uh, pan fishing. I, I buy them for catching bait out of the river. And they've actually hauled in some really big fish. But I just use cheap reels and cheap rods for catching bait fish for catfishing. But I was chucking lures because I didn't really have special rods for special occasions. I just had my three rods that, you know, if I was catfishing, I'd have three of them out. Otherwise, I'd just be using one for chucking lures. So this is basically what I caught my first muskie on. Or my first, my first notable muskie. Uh, this is just a HT Optimus Optimax 101S. Really, really cheap reel that I want to replace as soon as possible. I mean, I do go cheap, but sometimes things, they still need to work properly. So I started buying, uh, loose spinning reels from I bought one from Walmart that I really liked that a fish took in during one of my videos from last spring but then I got this this blue one speed spin 200 I don't know I got this this blue one and this green one this one says Mac Mach, mech, speed spin. They're a little bit different. Well, I like them a lot. I really like the loose brand reels that I've used so far. But this is another rod that I use for basically what I call bait fishing. But I mean, if I'm pan fishing, I'm using the same things. Uh, this is just a Shakespeare Durango six foot medium action rod it works great for hauling in hauling in fish that i like using for catfish bait this is also the setup that i use for lighter uh artificial lures like little spinners or probably if i ever get into throwing jigs into open water i'll probably use this just any lure that just isn't working on a low profile bait caster i'll throw on this combo and chalk up with that, works pretty good. Okay, so here I've got about a $5 Tiny 20 is the only thing on it other than five foot three inches. Uh, it's a one piece rod that I got at Menominee Outdoors for about five bucks. And they were, they were brand new. It was really hard to find a reel that would fit in it. So I jammed it as best I could and then I wrapped it in some some like hockey tape type stuff and um, this here I got it's called Stinger is that really the name oh Zebco Stinger 20 I don't know what's up with the number 20 but apparently it makes the reel better or something Again, I don't really care about my panfish reels that much. I mean, I do want to switch everything over to like nicer blues like these, but I'm not in a rush. I want to have reels that work. But this was just another bait catching rod until I went on my Mississippi River trip this year and it ended up using it for slip bobber fishing, which is another thing I just kind of learned how to do this year. But yeah, this. I like for slip bobber fishing. I got a cane rod that I'm gonna have to try out this summer. And I pick, I've been thinking about getting one. And then uh, Jake from Jigging with Jake did a video, a couple videos with a cane rod, I believe, and kind of, kind of made me decide to finally actually buy one. But I never got around to using it this summer. All right, so then I finally got some actual lure chucking <clears throat> setups I grabbed this uh, Black Mac, Abby Garcia Black Max combo it, it obviously was a different rod I started using that for chucking lures I took it off the rod because the rod was a one piece and at that point I was 
still very um, anti One Piece and only for the fact that I hike and backpack into a lot of fishing spots. Also, I don't have a truck at the moment. So it was a lot easier to just make sure everything was two piece. This is not what got me into using bait casters. This was my first low profile bait caster and I absolutely love using these for chuck and lures. Everything except like extremely small ones. But I had this on a two piece and I finally broke down and got one pieces. I got this uh, Berkley lightning rod shock. Uh, engineered for braid line, so that's nice because I'm almost exclusively braided line. Medium heavy, seven foot rod that I use 65 pound braid on and I chuck like your average size like number five maps and like six inch uh, jerk baits and but then I grabbed this combo. It's a Luz Xfinity Speed Stick. So this one's only a six inch ten, six foot ten inch rod, medium heavy. I really like this combo. I don't really like the eyes past this point because they stop having the double bracing and they're not very durable. Um, but other than that, I like the performance of the reel a lot and the rod. <clears throat> And again, I use that for the same size baits. Now, all right, so when I finally got into bait casters, I bought this cheap Ambassador 6500 series, Abby Garcia. I wanted to try them, so I just bought a cheap one to get going. And it was enough to get me going, so I ended up buying more expensive ones later. And I've been through three of these, three or four of these, and they all have gone to crap on me like like this one that's that's not supposed to happen i mean like really really not supposed to do that so and the other ones prior to it had worse things like it sounded really bad inside too i mean i know people that have them and haven't had any problems but i'm just not gonna suggest something that i've had multiple issues with and I've you know it's not just me I've heard lots of other people have but it is a China made Abby Garcia so I've been told not to buy the China ones which is still kind of even a no-brainer but there's a silver cat rod something fishy and I can't read that anymore silver cat rod I really like the rod kind of on the smaller end for catfishing, but it definitely hauls in some. I hauled in a 15 pound channel cat with it. And I'm, it, I mean, it definitely could. I've hauled in big sturgeon with it too, like almost five foot sturgeon. Um, I got this Zebco big cat rod, which is basically just a emergency buy backup rod that I had to get. And I got another one of my, uh, 6500 series Abby Garcia's. I think that one actually kind of works still. This is a 7000 series Abby Garcia Ambassador that I got from my manager for 20 bucks. And that was my first 7000 series. I was actually planning on getting one of these reels anyway, so that was really cool. And it was he said he had barely ever used it and he just didn't need that specific one anymore. So that got me sold on those. I don't have it on a choice rod right now. It's a Berkley Mudcat. I mean, it works, but the reel doesn't seat real well in it. So I got a zip tie around it. I mean, it gets the job done. But I definitely need to upgrade my rods next. After that, I did go and I paid full price for this 7,000 uh, catfish special one. 7,000 series. I mean, as far as I know, 
from Tell is basically the same thing, it's just a different color and it has a catfish on it. I have that on, yes, it's a spinning rod, but guess what? It still works. Berkeley glow stick. And the glow stick, there were there's a battery compartment in the handle and the whole tip, like the whole top half of the rod lit up, which was really cool. Night night catfishing when it worked, but it didn't work very long. But I like the rod. I've caught my 25 pound flathead with it and a bunch of other catfish and I'm pretty sure I couple a decent surgeon with this one. Um, I'll definitely get more of these reels. Those were about 160 bucks new. So that's essentially I want to have all 7000 series for my catfish rods or catfish re reels and then after that I'm going to work on my rods and start upgrading all of those. The Kid Rat has the Zebco slingshot and this is basically his because it's red and that's his favorite color. It was combo. So Zebco slingshot real. He also has a Zebco hot cast which is a green version of the one I caught that big musky with two springs ago. Mr. Crappie slab shaker reel. This is a good reel. I mean it works. I just there's one little tab that I can't seem to figure out which way it needs to go. Not everything works just fine. It just clicks kind of annoyingly all the time. You got Doc Demon. Everybody needs a Doc Demon. My kid's first rod and before I had three bait catching rods, I used this a lot to catch bait. I acquired this from my brother because apparently he didn't want it no more. Shakespeare Ugly Stick Catfish Rod. Medium heavy eight foot rod. Um, he's got a big cat, Zebco big cat, 50 XT reel. It, it's a huge spinning reel. Probably not gonna keep this. Probably end up doing something with it. Then, last year, I spotted this rod. And like I said, I've been only chucking lures on those base, their bass setups. The Zeb, the, the Luz and the Abby Garcia Low Pro bait casters, and they're great, but then I started wanting to chuck bigger baits, and they weren't really handling them that real well. So I was kind of in the market for an actual musky rod, and Bob at Menominee Outdoors had gotten this Shimano, and I covered up a lot of the specs with a GoPro sticker. It's extra, extra heavy, which is which I'd rather just have it. A uh, heavy, probably an extra heavy actually, but um, it's like 250 260 dollar reel, I believe, rod, I believe, and I got it for like 75 bucks. It was like it's used, but it's in extremely good condition. So I picked that up, and then I was using my Black Max on it, which is kind of a disgrace to the rod, but. That's all I had, and then I went and I actually dropped $300 on this Abby Garcia Toro Beast. Yeah. Abby Garcia Toro Beast. Like, obviously I'm not a real big specs guy. I just kind of pick stuff that works and use it. It says it pulls in 34 inches and 88 centimeters of line per turn. So yeah, that worked a lot better. This this is my musky setup that I probably would have never actually had unless, except for getting that rod so cheap. I probably would not have bought this reel if I had to buy a $250 rod to go with it. But I definitely need to get out and use that a lot more. Like I actually want to hit some lakes. Yeah, believe it or not, I want to hit some lakes and that are actually known for musky or even just big pike this summer, preferably on my kayak. And then I got odds and ends. A lot of rod bottoms. I got a couple of rod tips for that silver cat because I had two of them, broke one. So I have an extra, or actually broke the bottom half for once in my life. 
So for that silver cat that I still have, I have my spare tip and then my brother broke his rod, the handle on his silver cat. So he just gave me his tip. So I have two spare tips for that. So hopefully I break the tip instead of the bottom half of it. And I got a couple of bottoms. I always save this stuff because um, usually you break a tip, so it's hard to find a replacement tip for a right reel or rod, but every once in a while you do break a bottom or find a tip. It's nice to be able to put together rods like that I'm going to use for bait catching. So that's all my summertime fishing rods. I pretty much have something for everything now. And like I said, when I first really started getting, like, like I fished my whole life, but when I really started, like, seriously fishing like all the time i had three rods i switched them all over for bottom fishing when i'd bottom fish and then when i got into lures i'd switch one over for lures i'd have to have one set up for bait catching while i'm cat fishing and then if i got enough bait i'd have to switch it over to a catfish rod and then for lures i started chucking different kinds of lures and wanting to have different setups for it. like eventually like you can fish with like one rod. You can fish with a stick and a piece of string, but it, it's okay to just buy the cheap stuff. But when you start really, really fishing as much as I do, it's really nice to be able to have each setup ready to go for what you're using them for. I'm gonna show you a little bit closer because the camera was kind of far away. Here's those Abby Garcia 6500 series. My kids rod and reel. Abby Garcia, Black Max, Toro Beast, Blues. I would recommend one of these. Abby Garcia, 7000, 7000 Catfish Special. The one I acquired from my brother. All right. Now I get to put all that stuff back. So that's my rod and reel collection. But that's what I like to use. That's my setups. I'm always upgrading, looking for better things, ways I like better. But that's that never stops. Like you get a new bait, you feel like you have to get a new rod. Hey! Yes, I am in different clothes now. After editing this video and it cleared the 20 minute mark, I, I also filmed all my ice fishing rods. But yeah, after this video cleared the 20 minute mark while editing, I decided to put all that in a separate video, a shorter, a little bit shorter one. I'll be dropping that sometime this week. Um, I have two fishing videos that I filmed this weekend. At least we'll be back to a more normal video, but in the middle of the week, hopefully by, hopefully by Friday, if not tomorrow, I'll be dropping the ice fishing version of this one. But I also wanted to come on here and say that I got addresses from the Funkin' CT and uh, Garen, is it Garen or Jaren? I don't know, really bad with names, really bad with, uh, really bad with everything pretty much. But uh, yeah, I got your address, thank you uh, Seth, I can just hand that to him. And then Gin Fishing, Gin Fishing, I've not heard from you. So if you're actually watching this video, you need to comment on this video that you're there. And then you need to go to Midwest River Rat Facebook page. And you need to message me your address. Otherwise, by next week, I'm going to redraw all the from all the people that did not win. And I'm going to redraw. And if you won this, but if you don't give me your address, I'm going to redraw. And the next person is going to get this. So this could be up to grab, up for grabs in another week or so. But I will be getting you guys stuff mailed out. I uh, just paid a bunch of bills this week and I'm broke. So next payday, it's coming Friday. I'll mail that stuff. It's out. So yeah, look for the ice fishing version of this one. All my ice rods um, that I've collected since pretty much starting last year buying stuff, I think. And thanks for watching this. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.